Yo, it has been two years and I'm back with another smart home video. And this video is gonna be an update to my smart home with the in-wall iPad. Now, if you haven't seen that first video, make sure you check that one out because I'm gonna talk about some of the same stuff and also some different things too. So number one, this house is a home kit house. So this is gonna be using Apple's home kit system. And that's because my primary phone is an iPhone. I still get a lot of questions about the in-wall iPad and let's talk about it. You know, this is a fourth gen iPad mini and it still works fine after two years of being on 24 seven hardwired into the wall. Now there is no burn on in the screen, which I'm actually pretty shocked about. The wall mount was pretty expensive and it's still 160 bucks. Now there are different wall mounts out there, but this is the one I use and it matches the decor and it's been rock solid since I got it. Have no issues with it at all. I do have a recess plugged in the wall and that lets the iPad sit flush. Now the one thing I am worried about is that this iPad cannot be updated to iOS 16. So I know I'm not gonna get any of the newest enhancements with OS and a lot of things are changing with HomeKit so I may replace it with a modern iPad. I'm not quite sure yet. I also did toss in an Apple TV to the mix, which I have right here on this TV. And I just love getting pop-ups from my cameras, letting me know if it sees someone outside on my TV, so then I can kind of know what's going on without having to pop open my phone. And I can use it for voice assistant too, but honestly, I, I don't really use it that much. I mainly just use it for the cameras and just always knowing what's going on, but I'm not using my TV as a hub or, or anything like that. Now, speaking of the tablet, for the software, I still use Home Plus for that dashboard. Now, this gives me access to all the controls I want in one spot without having to flip through pages as you do with the default home app. My main screen shows the lights on the first floor and also scenes and also my cameras. I have scenes for different brightness levels. So like every day, which is like 70%, Relax, which is 20%, and Bright, which is 100%. At 7 p.m. automatically, it goes to Relax to help with wind down for me and, and also my kid. I made this happen under the Automation section in the Home Plus app. Also, it does kick on the heat upstairs as I do have a split zone boiler system. I do use a Nest thermostat, and I'll talk about how I got Nest into HomeKit a little bit later in this video, since it's actually not HomeKit compatible. Home Plus also added widgets, so I have a few widgets on my iPhone, which makes running scenes that much easier. I can just tap it on my phone or tap it on my watch to activate the scene. Now I switched from Nest cameras and I moved over to Arlo. Now the reason I switched to Arlo is that it's HomeKit compatible natively. Arlo is also 100% wireless, which is convenient for interior cameras, but for exterior cameras, I'd rather have them plugged in. I also have two more cameras in the house that are strictly on battery, and I kind of have those floating around depending on what I need them for. So this house is an older house, and it has a lot of weird wiring, so I had like four switches in one room, and it was like a mess flicking switches on and off, and so I did install Lutron Castilla Deluxe switches. Even though they function great, just looking at them, it, they look really good. It looks very premium. And you can find them for around 60 bucks per switch. You know, these dimmer switches are so cool and they're so smooth. And they've never given me a problem since I installed them about three years ago. Now, I can't say that for the cheap switches that I have throughout the house too, that I bought on Amazon, because they have given me nothing but problems. So in my opinion, spend the money on the Lutron Castilla switches. You would not be upset that you did. Now, speaking of money, if you're on a budget, the Diva Dimmer from Lutron is another excellent option. It's a rocker switch, so you have on and off, and then there's like a little dimmer on the side that allows you to set the exact brightness as you need it. It's not as luxurious as the Deluxe, but it has some of the same features, especially if you're on a budget. I added some smart shades to the mix as well, and these are Lutron Serena Smart Shades. I never had smart shades before, so this was new for me. I didn't know how silent they were and how easy installation was. I installed them to be an inside mount so they're flush to the window. They come in many different colors and styles, which can be overwhelming. I gotta be honest, I'm not that great at figuring that stuff out, but they can help you pick out the color and style. I actually showed them what I currently had in my house and they were able to pick that out for me. You can set automations in the Home Plus app 
to have them open and close with sunset and sunrise. You can have them close when you leave the house, you know, things like that. I'm loving how they look so far and I can't wait to dig into them. They are also battery powered too, but I can't comment on battery life just yet. But so far, this is a great way to take things to the next level. So I use a car for a lot of things and I have videos on a car too. So make sure you watch those videos if you have more questions about a car, how it works and the hub and all that stuff because I have some dedicated videos on those. So please watch that. So with my car set up, I have door sensors. So when my door is open, it makes a chiming sound from the Acara hub, which is in the living room. So not only does it chirp when the door opens, but it can also notify me if the door is left open for so many minutes. I have a leak detector that I keep under my sinks and also in my bathrooms. And if the sensor gets wet, it does notify me. I also have temperature and humidity sensors that I put throughout the house too. So I know the temperature in every level of the house. I can also use the temperature as a trigger to turn off or on the heat or have it just notify me if something isn't right. I also have a few smart plugs that are from Acara, one for my Christmas tree, and I have one for the lighting under my TV in the basement. I also do have this motion sensor that triggers the lights on in the foyer. So this motion sensor talks to the Castilla switches that turns on the light in the foyer so you never walk into a dark house. So I have this wireless switch too that can let me do different things in the basement. So for example, this turned off all the lights in the basement besides my studio light, obviously. And then if I tap it, it turns the lights back on too. And I also have it adjust the color temperature to 5,500 Kelvin. And these little switches are really nice. So that's the basis of this smart home. Everything is in one spot that can be controlled from an iPad or my phones, or even using voice commands. I also have something called Hoobs, which adds non-Apple items, like these Govee strips, my Nest thermostat, and also my Nest door lock. But Hoops allows you to add these Google Home items or Alexa items all into your HomeKit smart hub. I will say Hoops is not super user friendly unless you have some computer knowledge because setting up each device may take a couple of additional steps. So I've been trying to transition away from putting things in Hoops, but I still have the ability to, to add things. So I still have a couple of Nest things and also my light strips from GoV. Those are Alexa compatible, but I have it going into Hoops that way. I'm gonna link a video to Hoobs down below so you can learn more about that too. Now, speaking of light strips, Nanoleaf has amazing light strips. You can see it right here. I have something called the Nanoleaf Lines, which is on my back wall too. And I think these look pretty sweet as well. There's so much more I did with my smart home, but I'm trying to keep this video as just an update. So make sure you watch my first video link down below for additional automations I did. And also make sure you hit subscribe to be notified when I make more videos. In the spring, I'm gonna add a smart controller for my garage and maybe even pick up a native Apple Home Key lock when they become more available. Anyways, guys, this is Kevin the Tech Ninja. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a wonderful day. Peace.